Hello everybody, this is Free Sky Steve, and today we're talking about planes that are a bit lackluster and maybe some stuff we can do to make them a lot more enjoyable. Um, what I would say, without throwing any particular company under the bus, I have noticed this across the board with a lot of different manufacturers, and that is the hobby has kind of switched away from building your own planes and buying planes and kits where everything is set up. And typically what we find are a lot of planes that are set up for six channels. And in order to do this, a lot of times we have things like ailerons on Y cables. And because of this, we have problems somewhat built into that scenario, which I'll discuss in a moment here. Uh, a lot of these kits that we buy have the potential to fly a lot better than they do right out of the box with some modifications and therefore we're going to talk about what you can do to get your planes flying better and i think there's a lot more planes out there that could fly a lot better with some simple instructions and especially if you have the ability to go in and do some fairly simple tweaks to it and that's what we're going to talk about. How do we get your planes flying better, especially if they're the kit planes? I think Warbirds in particular, the ones that you find in the hobby stores and things like that, they have the potential to fly better. They think they're designed to look great. They have to look scale, but to get them to fly scale with their initial setups is going to be very difficult. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about a couple things here. Number one, we're going to go in the mixer, and we're going to talk about ailerons. Now, if I could talk you into one thing, and that would be you do not want to replace something that's packed out into six channels with another six-channel rec receiver from FreeSky. At the very least, you need to break your ailerons into two separate channels, and there's tremendous advantages for doing this. You can tune your plane a lot better right away if there's one thing in particular you can do if you do, i hope you don't believe me but i hope you trust me enough to try this yourself break the ailerons off of one channel put them on two channels and you can see this is an example of a two channel aileron so what you have is on let's say this is your left aileron it goes when this one goes up your right aileron goes down and when this one goes down your right aileron goes up. So what we're going to do is talk about this whole notion right here, this linear curve, because for years we've accepted this as gospel. That's how you set up an aileron. Well, I'm starting to see now when you get into the more expensive models that the instructions are saying things that uh, you really have to do in order to get them to fly well and especially planes that have two things in particular number one they have the ailerons close to the wingtips usually planes like this have flaps inside the middle between the fuselage and the ailerons and the other thing is they could be flying wings last thing i'll point out are planes that don't have a functioning rudder i call those banking yank banking yank planes so the problem that i've seen is that we understand that this is your up aileron so what happens is that catches the wind and because it catches the wind if this one is up your left one it's going to cause that wing to come down so it, the left wing is going to drop and it creates a left roll and this is exactly what we want to do and what happens is as you're doing this the right aileron is also putting in 100 percent. so this is 100 percent up this is 100 percent down and everything's hunky-dory at least we think it is but the reality is that after a certain point this doesn't really do a lot, but what it does do is it starts to grab the wind and 
it starts to push the nose in the opposite direction of the turn, and that is what we call adverse yaw. There's a lot of great videos out there that explain this better, but what we're trying to do is maybe this isn't as important as we thought it was. So the way we can go ahead and we can edit it on our models is to go into this thing right here called differential. And maybe you've seen this in here before, and maybe you didn't know what it's about. What we're going to do, when I was looking at the instructions for Super Decathlon, this is what it recommended. Now, keep in mind, this was a large, high-performance plane, but this was what it wanted. So, as this other one went up to 100%, this one dropped down to 50%. That's pretty aggressive. And what I did, after I saw this, I went back to one of my planes that for years just flew like a large lumbering plane. And I changed this down to about 30%. So default was 20%, but I gave it 30% a try. And so what that means is that this is one aileron. So as it goes up, it goes up 100%, but as it comes down, it only comes down 70%. Okay, so we got that. And because of that, it's not going to catch the wind. It's not going to, it's going to help affect a smoother turn where you, you don't have adverse yaw, where it's, the nose is actually turning into the turn itself and you have a smoother turn. Now, there's one other thing we can do. And this is where people say, oh man, that's cheating. What you should be doing is you should be mixing in. And if you're, a seasoned RC pilot, you should be doing this by hand, and maybe you have years of experience where this is muscle memory for you. However, I kind of find that when I'm sitting around the field and I'm BSing with my buddies, uh, sometimes I'm not super paying attention and I'm not actually using the rudder. So what I'd like to do is add in some rudder. I'm gonna put this in the last position. And by default, this is 20%. I find that for my planes, it's maybe perhaps a bit too low, but it's better than nothing. And what we're looking for is whichever aileron goes up on that side of the plane, the rudder should be turning towards that side of the plane. And you can set this up on a switch if you wanted to. So instead of being always on, you can create a switch position where you can turn it on and off and see for yourself if it improves your flight. What I find is that somewhere between 20 and 30% on this as well kind of helps out with the turn. You got to be careful by not putting too much of this into your turn. Otherwise, you'll turn the nose right outside the turn. And so instead of being a benefit, it's also not is also creating adverse yaw, but in the opposite direction. So be really careful with this. Be conservative. Start off a little bit. I typically, when I take my planes out for a flight, when I want to fine tune them, uh, I will take them up, fly them around for a little while, see what it's like, take it down, and change this. So maybe I might take this down to say it's working okay. Maybe I'll take it down to 25% see if it works better or worse and if it's doing worse maybe i'll take it up to 35 percent the next time and see if that flies better or worse and if that is worse then i'll bring it back down to 30 percent and that's how you affect change and get a plane that maybe isn't as wonderful to fly as you hope it would be flying a lot better and if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments and i do thank you for watching have a great day